The Star Trek universe consists of innumerable extraterrestrial species that all have their own unique powers, abilities, as well as their ideologies. While some of these alien races agree with the Federation's message of spreading peace and harmony, there are a few hostile species who oppose this view as well, ranging from the deadly species 8472 to the Borg and even the Changelings. The Starfleet have had to defeat many such alien races in their pursuit of peace. These alien beings also put up a good fight against the Starfleet, and today we will be taking a look at some of the most intimidating alien species that were determined to destroy and conquer everything that crosses their path in the whole Star Trek universe. But before we get into our explanation, we do just have one very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks! Now, let's begin. Species 8472 Species 8472 were a mysterious species that typically resided in a dimension known as fluidic space, and they were first discovered by the Borgs. In fact, the Borgs had approached them, intending to assimilate them into their collective, but Species 8472 were powerful enough to resist their attack. Species 8472 then retaliated by going after the Borgs, and they even made their way to the Borgs' territories and killed several of them. It so happened that the Starfleet was passing by the Borg territory at the same time and Captain Janeway soon noticed the ongoing Borg massacre. The doctor onboarded the ship and created special biomolecular warheads with modified nanoprobes that could kill species 8472, and the Starfleet's crew even joined hands with the Borgs to defeat the hostile species. Species 8472 were so powerful that even the collective efforts of the Borg and the Starfleet could not eradicate them at first, and Captain Janeway even suffered a fatal injury during their encounter. However, they eventually used the doctor's weapon to subdue species species 8472 by going after them in fluidic space and temporarily getting rid of them. These creatures did continue to make appearances every now and then, and they eventually even managed to take the appearance of humanoids to move undetected at space stations. When the Starfleet crew encountered them once again and uncovered their true identity, the head of species 8472 thought that the Federation was attacking them. However, Captain Janeway assured them that the Federation was unaware of their existence and that the Starfleet crew came in peace, and she managed to establish a peace treaty with them. Species 8472 472 were an extremely dangerous species, and it was a good idea to resolve things peacefully with them instead of going on the offensive. Species 8472 were an advanced species that used organic technology, and their bioships were created out of the same biological material as their bodies. They could also communicate with the help of telepathy, and they were typically known for looking down on other species and viewing them as inferior. The Borg. The Borg were cybernetic humanoids that resided in the Delta Quadrant and were a pseudo-species that operated within the Borg Collective. All the Borg within the Collective were linked to each other, and they had a hive mind that made it possible for them to share information with every Borg simultaneously. While the true origin of the Borg is still unknown, the Borg were notoriously known for attacking other species and then merging them with their collective. They did this by the process of assimilation, through which they would turn other creatures into one of them and also gain access to their technology and knowledge. After doing this for several years, the Borg had become an extremely fearful species who could access a wide variety of knowledge through their hive mind. While Borg drones were typically humanoids, they had a few distinct physiological features depending on the species that they belonged to before they were assimilated. While their origins were unclear, the Borg had taken control over a few planetary systems in the Delta Quadrant in 1484. Over a period of time, they had assimilated several thousand planets by the year 2373, and the Federation had learned about their existence by this time. In fact, Captain Jean-Luc Picard also faced a Borg cube in late 2366, and a whole bunch of Starfleet ships were destroyed by the Borg during this encounter. The Starfleet had an extensive history with the Borg, but the Enterprise reportedly destroyed them in 2401. While the Borg are possibly extinct, they were a huge threat to the Federation, and they had conquered several planetary systems during their reign of terror. They were also notoriously known for stealing all the technology from their targeted planets, and they would later combine this technology with the technology developed by the Collective in order to create advanced weapons and equipment.
the Herosian. The Herosian were a nomadic species of the Delta Quadrant, and they were typically known as hunters who would prey on other life forms. They were very focused on hunting, and they lacked compassion or empathy towards any other species. Their entire culture was centered around the hunt, and they even traveled across great distances to hunt other species. Their society followed certain rituals and involved painting their faces and wearing special helmets before leaving for their hunts. They typically traveled alone in their vessels, or in pairs of two, and their vessels could cover a distance of a thousand light years in a period of five years. Sometimes they also traveled in a big group if they wanted to catch a resilient prey, and these groups had a similar hierarchy as that of a wolf pack. In this way, each Herogen group had a leader, also known as an alpha, and the second in command, who was known as a beta. They also possessed advanced technology in the beginning, but they never developed on upgrading their technology and only continued to focus on hunting-related activities. They had special body armor, masks, and a range of dangerous weapons weapons that helped them hunt. In this sense, they lived like nomads and became an isolated race that was eventually bound to go extinct. The Voyager had several encounters with them over the period of a long time, and this mostly happened whenever the Hirogen targeted prey on board the Voyager vessel. In the late 24th century, a group of Hirogen also came in touch with the Federation, and Admiral Jean-Luc Picard then played a huge role in establishing peaceful relations with them. Tribbles. Tribbles were a rodent-like species that originated on Iota Geminorium IV. They were tiny, non-intelligent creatures, typically known for their abnormally quick reproductive race. They were little furry creatures that cooed aloud when someone touched them, and their touch also had tranquilizing effects on humans. They were fairly harmless creatures who didn't really intend to cause any damage to human beings, and as such, they didn't even have things like sharp teeth. However, they could reproduce at such a fast rate that they could destroy an entire planet's ecosystem by rapidly multiplying and creating chaos all over the place. Their bodily metabolism was also designed in such a way to support asexual reproduction, and a single Tribble was capable of producing 10 more beings in just 12 hours. In this way, these Tribbles could multiply and create over a million progenies in just three days. These creatures first crossed paths with humans in the early 2150s, when Denobulan Dr. Phlox brought them on board the Enterprise NX-01. In 2256, Captain Lorca kept a pet Tribble on board the USS Discovery. These creatures eventually stirred up trouble when Edward Larkin brought them on board the USS Cabot and modified their DNA to increase their reproductive rate. Tribbles continued to stir trouble for the Federation for several years until Klingon warriors decided to completely obliterate the species in the 23rd century. We have destroyed their weapons array. Maneuver us to within grappling range. The Vidian Sodality The Vidian Sodality was the government that overlooked the Vidian species that resided in the Delta Quadrant. This species was affected by the phage disease for 2,000 years, and they finally recovered after the think tank came up with a cure for their condition in 2375. As soon as they found a cure, the Vidians returned to their old ways and started living by their old morals and ideals. This caused quite a stir for the Delta Quadrant, and the entire species was then targeted by other races who sought revenge for how the Vidians had previously treated them. In order to cure themselves, the Vidians resorted to harvesting organs from corpses, as well as living beings in order to experiment on them. They had even appeared as villains in the Star Trek Voyager series, where they often tried to harvest the organs of the Voyager's crew members. Well done, Ono. Changelings The changelings were an alien species that originated in the Gamma Quadrant in the Milky Way galaxy. They were shape-shifting life forms, and they even created and ruled over Dominion. Some of these changelings were also known as the founders of the species that resided on Dominion, and all changelings initially existed in the form of an orange liquid. This liquid contained a structure known as the morphogenic matrix that contained enzymes that allowed them to change their form. In their younger forms, the changelings had to return to their natural state in order to regain their strength every 16 hours or else their bodies would start deteriorating. They could take any corporal form and mimic any humanoid species quite accurately. In fact, even Starfleet sensors were unable to detect a changeling when it took another form. Besides taking humanoid forms, these creatures could mimic the appearance of computers, fire, clouds, or many other objects as well. Their bodies were also highly resistant to many dangerous objects, and they could also survive in the vacuum of space. Their entire culture revolved around shapeshifting, and the Great Link also united them. The Great Link was essentially the medium by which the changelings mingled with one another in their natural form, and it was also considered to be the capital of Dominion. Changelings also had a very little sense of self, and only saw themselves as part of a bigger culture. They liked to operate in groups, and they even stayed with other changelings even if they didn't get along, instead of staying by themselves.
The Gorn. The Gorn were a bipedal reptilian species ruled by an interstellar government known as the Gorn Hegemony. They were cold-blooded reptiles with rubbery green skin and red blood. And they were a lot stronger than humanoids. Their bodies were also highly durable, and most weapons or objects would simply bounce off their bodies without injuring them. They hatched from parasitic eggs that were incubated inside a humanoid host, and then they took a few months to grow to their adult form. In this form, they could spit venom that could blind their prey and even infect their hosts with more eggs. These creatures were also dangerous hunters, and they were also quite intelligent and skillful at hiding themselves from any sensors. They had entire breeding planets where they would hold sentient beings hostage in order to use them as breeding sacs, and the adult Gorns would periodically visit these planets to create more children. The Gorn first came across humans between 2230 and 2340, when the SS Puget Sound was captured by the Gorn and taken to their planetary nursery. Lan Nunian Singh was aboard that ship, and she later reported that the Gorn would also eat some of the hostages and then use the rest as host bodies for their eggs. However, she had survived the hunt and even managed to escape the planetary nursery, and she later even stated that these alien species were pure evil and that it was impossible to come to an understanding with them. Something about your maternal ancestors. The Tholians. The Tholians were a humanoid species from the Alpha Quadrant, and they were especially unique due to their crystalline appearance. They had a hard carapace made of minerals, and they also had six spindly legs that made it possible for them to move around. They also had two arms tapered off in multi-fingered hands, and a visible neck covered with a semi-transparent membrane that protected their heads. They were quite a unique species, and they exclusively communicated through a series of clicks and chirps. Their bodies also emitted different forms of radiation, and these creatures were also known for their punctuality and honesty. The Tholians had had an embassy that acted as their government, and Starfleet officers often felt like their government was quite aggressive during their confrontations. The Tholian assembly was also known for killing anyone who entered their territory without consent, and they also annexed any systems near their space in order to isolate them from the rest of the universe. The Tholians first came in contact with the Federation starship Enterprise NX-01 in 2152, and they later continued to have conflicts for the next century. In the 2250s, the Tholians launched an attack on Beryllium, and they later even captured the USS Defiant in 2268 by luring them with a false distress signal. However, the USS Enterprise discovered the starship and later even realized that it was trapped in the Tholium Mirror Universe. His loyalty is admirable, even if it is misplaced. Cardassians. The Cardassians, not to be confused with the Kardashians, mind you, were a humanoid species residing in the Alpha Quadrant on a planet called Cardassia Prime. They were infamously known as ruthless creatures, and they had gained a reputation as one of the biggest enemies of the Federation. They were also the sworn enemies of the Klingon Empire, and they also had quite a xenophobic attitude towards any being that belonged to a different species. They also had a strange appearance with two vertical neck ridges that could be traced all the way back to their skull. They also had an inverted ridge in the center of their forehead resulting in them being referred to as spoonheads. Cardassians also had photographic memories as a result of rigorous childhood training. These creatures were vulnerable to several syndromes, diseases, and plagues, and they also had a toxic reaction to cobalt diselenide. They had a hierarchical culture, especially valuing their families, and viewed old age as a sign of strength and wisdom. This species was known for its advanced genetic engineering technology, and it even allowed other cultures to study its creations. They were also known for keeping records of anything and everything, and they had excessive databases and archives of events. They had an advanced education system superior to all other species in the Alpha Quadrant, and these creatures were following the philosophy of being loyal to their family and their state. Their society was initially known for its art and architecture but their planet soon became a military dictatorship. This resulted in a lot of chaos, and the Cardassians eventually decided to expand into the Milky Way galaxy to get their hands on more resources for their population. By the 24th century, these creatures were involved in three major wars with the Federation, as well as the Klingon Empire. Wait! The hull! Magnify! Yes, sir. Romulans. Originating on the planet Romulus, the Romulans were a humanoid race related to the Vulcans. They were essentially cousins, and the Romulans had descended from those who had rejected Surak's rule during the time of awakening. The Romulans soon established themselves as one of the most powerful species in the entire galaxy, and they were known for their strong moral compass and honor. Eventually, a supernova destroyed the Romulan sun, and these events eventually led them to reunite with the Vulcans and settle on Nivar. The Romulans knew about the existence of humans for a long period of time, and they finally came across 
across the humans when the Enterprise NX-01 first came across a Romulan minefield. They indulged in the Earth-Romulan War, and the Romulans eventually retreated into isolation from the Federation after the Treaty of Ogron was established. However, a Borg attack in late 2364 caused the Romulans to come face to face with the Federation once again, and they engaged in diplomatic relations with them. Besides this, the Romulans were quite xenophobic and they looked down on other species and even preferred to attack and conquer them rather than allying with them. The Romulans shared several physical characteristics with the Vulcans, as they had pointed ears, arched eyebrows, and varied skin colors. However, they were two different species, which was quite evident when Dr. Crusher could not treat a Romulan with the same treatment that he could use for the Vulcans. Romulan society had paid great importance to the military, and one's political ranking also greatly influenced their social standing. Klingons. Originating on the planet Konos, the Klingons were a species of humanoid warriors from the Beta Quadrant. They were undoubtedly one of the major powers in the entire galaxy, and they also had an aggressive culture that made them a fearful military power. Klingons were also known for their culture that faced tradition and honor, and the Klingon Empire was founded by Kallus the Unforgettable in the 9th century. The Klingon culture also paid a lot of importance to warriors, and the entire race eventually became known as a warrior race. They had quite an on and off relationship with humans and the Federation, and their first encounter resulted in a tense rivalry. When the Klingons gained access to the genetic material of human augments in 2154, they tried to use this technology, but it resulted in a terrible incident that triggered a mutagenic plague. Klingons lost the ridges on their foreheads in the initial stages of the plague, and a Klingon scientist then worked alongside Dr. Phlox on the Enterprise to create a cure. Over time, the tense rivalry between the Klingons and the humans turned into hostility and led to several battles, such as the Battle of Donatu 5, as well as the Battle of Binary stars. These incidents finally came to a full-fledged war, where the Klingons successfully conquered 20% of Federation space. Over the course of time, Klingons have continued to engage in war with the Federation and other species, such as the Romulans. Klingon society also underwent several changes, especially after the plague, and they had many unique physiological characteristics. Their skin colors ranged from olive and brown to many other colors as well, such as pink, purple, and red, and they also had an extended lifespan of over 150 years. Klingons were stronger than humanoids, and their strength did not decline even when they became old. They also had many rituals and traditions, and the Klingon society typically focused on warriors and neglected science and education for a long period. They did possess advanced technology, and their ships were fitted with several pieces of equipment, such as tractor beam emitters, deflector shields, and so on. They also used cloaking devices to move around undetected, and they even used cloaking screens to cover their vessels to avoid detection. Computer, intruder and ops. Activate a level 3 containment field. The Jem Hadar. The Jem Hadar were a genetically engineered species from the Gamma Quadrant, and they essentially served as the military force for the Dominion. They were a humanoid species with a reptilian appearance and were known to be one of the strongest military powers in the galaxy at some point. As an infant, these species resembled humans to a great extent, but they matured very quickly and learned advanced language skills and cognitive reasoning in no time. Their skin would turn pale and scaly, and they would soon have a reptilian appearance. As they grew up, Jem Hadars were addicted to the drug Ketracel White, and they suffered withdrawal symptoms if they did not consume it regularly. They also became violent and aggressive without the drug, and it was periodically supplied to them by Vorta overseers. These creatures had great vision and strength. They also had excellent camouflage skills. Over time, the Dominion started breeding the Jem'Hadar soldiers as part of their army, and they were then categorized into alphas and betas. These creatures were engineered to be soldiers, and they looked down on any form of relaxation or recreation. They were also designed to remain loyal to the founders, and most of them died at a young age in battle. The Jem'Hadar were also given advanced plasma weapons in the form of rifles and pistols, and they could fire lethal disruptor blasts laced with anticoagulants that could result in their opponent's slow death. They could also stun their targets, and their weapons were also enabled to completely vaporize a humanoid in extreme situations. They also carried combat knives, and many of them preferred to carry the Kartakan, a shock blade. Conclusion. Ranging from the shape-shifting changelings to the deadly species 8472, the Federation have come across some tough alien species that have continued to stir up trouble for them. They also faced many powerful species, such as the Klingons and the Romulans, and were opposed to many different cultures in their pursuit of peace and harmony. Each of these alien species followed their own societal rules and beliefs, and they certainly added a lot of drama and diversity to the Star Trek franchise. What are your thoughts on our list? Do we include your favorite species? Let us know in the comment section below, and if if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. Until next time, have a good one and be safe.